All right, so your first step, um, you want to bring all your exes together. So you could subtract the 3x and pull, pull that over, or you can subtract 5x. It really doesn't matter. Um, who subtracted 3x first? Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to subtract our 3x's over. So that'll be negative 6 equals 2x plus 8. And then what? What's my next step with that 8? Subtract it. Good. So when you add these in your calculator, you get negative 14. And when you divide both sides by a positive 2, you do get a negative 7. So I agree. I would agree with that answer. Um, anybody want to volunteer their answer for the second question? I saw a lot of decimals and fractions. What would you get? 1.5? Anybody else get 1.5? What you get? Three over two. Three over two is one point five. Yeah, three over two. Yeah, three over two. That's the fraction, or you could write it as a decimal and get one point five. So let's work through it. All right. So your first step should be to multiply your parentheses by six. So that would be six c. And anytime there's a variable that's not x, if you want to make it x, you can. So six c plus six minus 3 equals 2c plus 9. Combine your like terms. So when you combine your like terms, that would be the 6 and the negative 3. So that would be 6c. And then 6 minus 3 is what? What is 6 minus 3? Positive 3. All right, now we're going to subtract that 2c over, which gives you 4c plus 3 equals 9. And then we subtract 3. So 4c equals 6. So there's actually three answers that you could give me and get full credit. So I would give you full credit if you left it at 6 over 4. If you reduced that and said 3 over 2, that's also correct. And if you wrote that as a decimal, 1.5, that would also be correct. All right, so let's go to our notes now. And today we're going to um, focus on inequalities. So, no, we're not, sorry. We're not doing that. That's tomorrow. I'm a day ahead. We're going to put, we're solving for y. So let's solve these equations for y. Solve for a variable. So solving for a variable means that we have to figure out what is happening to y and then do the opposite of whatever operation is happening to y. So here, notice I have a two, a y, and a z. What's the invisible symbol? Like what operation is happening between these terms, between the two and the y and between the y and the z? What's happening? Are they being added? So this is your notes packet. It should be at the bottom of page one. The first page we started yesterday, we just didn't finish. Okay, yeah. Okay, so what's the operation happening here? Is it added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided? Multiply. multiply. And what's the opposite of multiplication? Division. Division. So we're dividing both sides by the 2 and by the Z. <clears throat> so when we do that, we're left with K divided by 2Z equals y and that is your answer 
So we're isolating Y. We're getting the Y by itself. Okay, so now let's look at question B. So again, I like to draw my arrow. This is what's happening to the Y. So the first thing we have to do is eliminate whatever is not attached to Y. And, that, and so in this example, it would be this 4X. Is that 4X positive or negative? Positive. So because it's positive, we need to subtract it. So we're subtracting 4x, let me draw my little river in, from both sides. So when I subtract it, on the left, I still have a 2y, but on the right, these are not like terms. So you cannot take 12 minus 4 and say that's 8. They're not like terms. They're going to stay separate. So it'll be the negative 4x first and then the 12. And the last thing we're going to do is divide everything by 2. When you divide everything by 2, we get y equals negative 2x plus 6. And that is it. So when you isolate or solve for a variable, your answer is an expression. It's not a number. All right, let's look at question C. So again, this is what I'm trying to get by itself. The first thing I'm going to do is move this negative 5x. Now, is that is negative, so I can't subtract it. What's the opposite? You're going to add it good. So we're adding 5x this time. I'm adding 5x to 10. But because they're not like terms, they stay separate. So it's going to be 5x, a positive 5x, and a positive 10 on the right side of the river. So first we move whatever's not attached to Y, and then we divide by the number in front of Y. So in this example, it's a two. And eventually we're going to graph, so I want you to keep that as a decimal. So I don't want you to write this as 2.5, just leave this as five over two. So five over two X plus five. All right, I want you to try to do D by yourself.
All right, let's go ahead and work through question D. You all did really good. <clears throat> so for question D, what am I going to do first? Add the 9x. So that would be negative 3y equals a positive 9x minus 18. Because I added the 9x, that makes it positive because I had to add it. And then we're dividing everything by negative 3. So I get y equals negative 3x. And what do you get when you divide two negative numbers? Two negative numbers. Does that stay negative or does it switch to a positive? A positive 6. So again, we are going to start graphing. I think we start graphing next week. So we'll talk about how to graph. We did have some graphing on the last test. All right, so a couple other things we're gonna do is look at writing some equations. So I want you to read this question and pick what equation you think represents. So take a minute, read it. I'll read it out loud while you read it. We can read it out loud, you can follow along. It says, in 1962, Wilt Chamberlain set the record for the most points scored in a single NBA game. He scored 28 points from free throws and made X field goals, worth two points each. If Wilt Chamberlain scored 100 points, how many field goals did he make? Which equation represents the number of field goals that, Ch that Chamberlain scored? So what equation represents that scenario? So take a minute and look at the four equations and which one would you choose, A, B, C, or D? So we know that he scored how many points? How many points did he score altogether? Altogether, he scored a hundred points. So he scored a hundred points. So I need an equation that equals a hundred. So that automatically knocks out these last two. So he scored twenty-eight points, and his field. Field goals are two points each. So this word two points each tells me that I'm multiplying two by X. So what equation has two being multiplied by X? A. This would be your correct answer. A. So 100 equals 28 plus 2X. All right, we have a couple more equations to solve. Um, go to example five. So one of the things on this test is talking about X and Y intercept. Let me zoom in on this first part here. So the Empire State Building run up is a race in which athletes run up the buildings 1,576 stairs. In 2003, Paul Craik set the record for the fastest time running up the average of about 165 stairs per minute. That's a lot. The function C equals 1,576 minus 165 M represents the number of steps. Crank had left to climb after n minutes. Find the zero of the function and interpret the meaning. Okay, so we already have a graph. So the graph appears to intersect. Where does it cross the x-axis? We have to look at it. Where, where does it look like? You have to approximate it. So that looks like it's what? About x equals what? This is my x-intercept. 
So if you had to approximate that number, what would you say that number would be? It's a little less than 10. So we'll say 9.5. which means that Paul finished the race in about 9.5 minutes or nine minutes and 30 seconds. So now let's solve the equation to see, because that's what it looked, it appeared to be on the graph. So now let's actually solve that equation. So let's solve our equation. So zero equals 1,576 minus 165M. How would you solve that equation? What would be your first step? Because remember, I'm trying to get M by itself. So this is M. The first thing you wanna do is move what is not attached. So this is positive. So what would I do? Subtract it. And now you're going to get rid of what is attached. So how would I get rid of this negative 165? You would divide it. So pick up your calculators. And I want you to type in negative 1,576 divided by negative 165. And we get something really close to it. So we actually get, if we round that, we get 9.6 equals M. So that's pretty hard too. So instead of it being, looking at the graph, it looked like 9.5, but when we solved it, we found out that it's really 9.6. So the solution is 9.6. which is nine minutes and 36 seconds. So that's pretty close to what we estimated at 9.5. Okay, we have time. Let's go back and do that question we skipped. Let's look at example two. So the diameter of Earth is 828 kilometers less than twice of the diameter of Mars. If Earth has a diameter of 12,756, what is the diameter of Mars? So let M equal the diameter of Mars. So M is going to be Mars. So my equation will be 12,756 equals 2m minus 828. So we're going to solve this equation. So the first thing you're going to do is get rid of this negative 828. How do you get rid of the negative 828? If it's negative, the opposite of subtraction would be addition. So add 828. So 13,584, who got that? All right, now what do you have to do to get rid of the two that's in front of M? Divide, go ahead and divide both sides by two. And you should get 6,792. 
<clears throat> and that is your diameter of Mars. All right, go ahead and take out homework one. So you should have finished numbers one through four yesterday. Did I give you those answers to the first four questions? Okay. Today on homework one, I want you to work on numbers five, six, and seven. So get five, six, and seven. If you need help, feel free to bring it up. I will help you.